All right, it's uh, 7 p.m. and we're going to call to order a public hearing. Uh, this is a public hearing for the amendments to the adequate public facilities ordinance in Chapter 98 on site and subdivision plans regulations concerning open space so ordinance 2019-12. And uh, could I get a show of hands of persons who are going to speak to this tonight so I can gauge out how much time we need. We got one, two. All right, we'll go with about three minutes apiece, if that's okay. And uh, you can go ahead and line up, and we'll listen to your comments at this time. So. I'll be your timekeeper. Thanks. And uh, Holly, can you make sure the microphone's on? Just turn it on. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening. My name is Brian DeLong. I live on the corner of Sunset and Hill. And, uh, and we were here in May, I guess, when the planning department first turned down this this AFPO, the open space for specifically uh, for the uh, apartments. That I'm sorry. Could we go ahead and get the street address? Uh, it's five one five one two Hill Street. Okay. Thank you, sir. Corner of Sunset and Hill. Okay. Uh, specifically, I'd like to know that if this passes, what is going to be the impact on a proposed apartment complex that is proposed down at Hill Street because as as of May and through a couple other meetings it did not meet the required open space and is there how, how is it going to affect it okay so so you're I uh, understand the uh, uh, the question it says more more of uh, the public hearing is for us to listen to you uh, as opposed to us uh, telling you all kinds of things. Uh, but in, uh, in regard to that, as it is proposed right now, uh, basically what it does is um, includes all of the downtown zone properties right. um, as a... Um, My concern is before it did not meet the requirements, mm -hmm. and when we get done tonight, are we going to find out that okay, now we have a 114 unit apartment complex going in, or that can be approved because all of a sudden magically it's meeting the open space requirements? Yeah. Well, I, you know, obviously I can't tell you what the. Uh... Um, sure. So the, the ordinance as introduced would not uh, would, would allow downtown zone properties to more easily qualify uh, under the APFO but probably probably not enough for the particular development that you're talking about would be my guess okay. however the Planning Commission made recommendations of changes to the ordinance from what was introduced that would exempt all, if, that if passed, would exempt all properties in the downtown zone from any open space measurement in terms of the APFO, okay. which would include the prospect place uh, development. So if approved this depends, evening? Depends on what gets approved. If it's okay. approved as introduced, probably not. Okay. If it gets approved with the Planning Commission changes, then yes, there'd be a complete exemption for all downtown zone properties. Okay. Uh, just for the record, there's, I, there's many of the neighbors in here, and personally speaking, it's, it's not going to do our street, it's not going to do our properties, it's not going to do our neighborhood any benefit except for increased traffic where the speed limit is posted at 50 cars. Cars currently come by at 35, 40 miles an hour, seven to nine in the morning, everybody in the evening, because it's a it's a quick bypass to go through downtown. I'm sorry, but the police are not enforcing it. They're not enforcing stop signs. I live on the corner. People speed up to come around the corner. It is a safety issue. And Sir, if I could, if I could just say, this is actually not just for this particular property. This is for all the properties, and that's what to look at. And I know from speaking with some of the council members, there's still serious concern to apply open space to residential property. Okay, that's that's fair. So I, I just let let them discuss it, okay. talk it out. Just voicing my concern. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. 
right. Ron Thompson, Van Mar. Uh, I stand before you tonight to uh, support the Planning Commission's recommendation to exempt the downtown zone from uh, Chapter 25-5G for open space. As I testified at the Planning Commission, uh, the town spent a great deal of money to produce a downtown vision plan, which identified specific open space design for the downtown. This ordinance, if passed, would prohibit redevelopment of properties within the downtown that have been targeted by the town for wanting redevelopment and um, would work against the implementation of the downtown vision plan. Therefore, again, I would recommend a support the Planning Commission's recommendation to exempt the downtown zone from the uh, open space ordinance. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Uh, is there anyone else who'd like to speak to 2019-12? All right. With that in mind, we'll call this public hearing uh, closed and adjourned. Uh, do I need a roll call on that? All right, and uh, let's see, the next public hearing will start at uh, 7.15, and the next public hearing is one uh, concerning Ordinance 2019-13. That'll be at uh, 7.15 p.m. Thank you. All right, we're going to call to order the second public hearing of the evening. That's a uh, public hearing amendments to Chapter 112 titled Zoning Relating to the Properties in the Downtown Zone and Development of Residential Units in the Downtown Zone, Ordinance 2019-13. Uh, how many people would like to speak on this ordinance? Got one. People must like Chick-fil-A. And two. <laughs> Okay, uh, if you'll go ahead and come up to the podium once again, we'll uh, try to stick to a three minute time frame. Hi, my name is Kristen Ellis. I live at 504 Hill Street. Um, honestly, I want to speak, but I don't know what I have to say because. As I look at all of the exemptions to the exemptions to the special amendments to all the th I don't know how we're really supposed to be pulling that apart and understanding. <laughs> it's like kind of need some special help with that. Um, but it does seem like there are contradictions. Um, if one of the if the uh, one of the main ideas, especially with the ordinance we were just talking about, number twelve, is to encourage. Uh, development in the downtown zone um, and to therefore exempt downtown zone uh, from having adequate public facilities uh, and in this next ordinance 13 um, there are then exceptions to the need to have the uh, retail um, on the main floor and uh, residential on the upper level, and that residential is purely residential, um, which would be such as the apartment complexes that some of us are here to uh, share our concern about. Um, so I don't know if anybody else agrees with me, but I'm a whole lot of confusion about a lot of it, but I'm very concerned. Um, I, I don't know that... Um, Maybe I missed out on some of these announcements, and a lot of us were here um, back when we understood it to be kind of public forum. Um, and it seemed like there were a lot of other meetings that happened between then and now that I wasn't aware of. Otherwise, I think a lot of us would have been there. Um, and again, maybe that was just me missing out on that. Um, 
but it seems like a lot of exceptions are being made, what it feels like is a lot of exceptions are being made for specific uh, development to occur um, that a lot of us are incredibly concerned about. Thank you. Again, Ron Thompson, Van Mar. I stand before you tonight urging the council to vote no and reject this ordinance and the Planning Com Commission recommendation to repeal the text amendment ordinance 2016-23, exempting first floor commercial from the um, first story on the ground level. There is still an active concept site plan pending with the Planning Commission, and this ordinance would interfere in an active site plan process under Chapter 98. It ignores the investment that has been made to the state in working through a site plan process, and it would ignore, this ordinance would ignore uh, that there is no commercial opportunity on this parcel. First of all, there is no street visibility from either Main Street or Prospect Road, so any businesses would be hidden from anybody driving by. Um, and commercial businesses, small business, need street visibility to attract customers, not be hidden in some development. The staff report dated January 9th, 2017, recognized all of this in their recommendation supporting the elimination of a commercial requirement on the first floor. I believe that the passage of this ordinance would essentially be a taking of the property, eliminating any development potential on this parcel within the downtown zone. Furthermore, passage of this ordinance would eliminate the proposed rails to trail connection from the downtown to the pros proposed CSX rails to trail connection uh, west of Hill Street. And you've been spending a lot of time on trying to enact that but you would have no connection. And that was about 1,800 feet of trail being proposed on this project. Again, I would urge the council to vote no, reject the ordinance, respect the site plan process, and allow that to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak on that ordinance? Once again, Brian DeLong, 512 Hill Street. And I just listened to the gentleman speak, and as Christian would say, some of these things are so convoluted that, I mean, we've talked to his neighbors, we can't figure it out. Is, is he referring to the specific property on the prospect apartments? Yep. Yes. I believe he was. So, yes. you know, if, if you get your way, you get your apartments, and then you get 1,800 feet of rails to trails. I'll take no apartments and no rails to trails any day over the development of 114 units that's going to put us somewhere around 250 cars through our neighborhood again, once again. And this, if, if the, the, the statute says that there should be commercial, it should be commercial and it should not be changed. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, uh, Greg Galetti, 308 Hill Street. Um, sorry, I uh, really didn't have an opportunity to read through this. As my neighbors have pointed out, this is a very convoluted uh, document, and I think it's it's quite unfair to the neighborhood and the uh, members of this community to have to try to navigate through this kind of information. But I would say um, that property that we're talking about, specifically on Prospect, it's on Hill and Prospect. So I don't understand the argument that they wouldn't have frontage or viewing from Prospect. So I reject that argument that uh, commercial properties wouldn't be seen by people traveling on Prospect. In addition, of um, those properties have the ingress and uh, egress off Prospect, plenty of people are going to see businesses on that uh, area. Uh, in addition, it seemed to me that we've been arguing that Hill Street 
being what it is, is not the proper ingress and egress for a development of that size. In what I can read here, it doesn't say that thou shalt not use Hill Street. It says something to the effect that it's undesirable. Well, it's more than undesirable. It's, it's dangerous. And if you pass this ordinance, I would like to see something in there that explicitly prohibits the people that are going to be in those apartments from going up and down Hill Street. I don't know if it's possible to do that. If it is, I, I implore you to do that. OK? Um, the other thing, I, again, I don't know the ordinances well enough, but it seems to me if you look at the Hill Street community, again, we're 110-year-old homes. There's probably 75 to 100 homes in that neighborhood. It doesn't seem reasonable to build or construct twice as many properties, in, in essence, doubling the density of that community uh, in this one uh, opportunity for these apartments. I would say if, if you can create something where there would be a percentage that could not exceed a certain percentage of the existing properties, that may be reasonable. But to, to come across and, and even entertain a development that's going to double the size of the community is, is ridiculous. OK, thank you. All right. Thank you, Greg. Greg just real quick. Uh, Greg, I, I believe it's more than a recommendation. The staff had serious concerns with the safety of traffic on Hill Street and back up in that neighborhood. So they, they definitely do not want any points of egress going through there. Yeah. This, this ordinance is about commercial on the first level. It's not about this particular, although it does impact this, uh, this project. Right. It's for all downtown. Understood. Understood. So a lot of people are speaking to specifics, saying if this is approved, this is for, it will impact it. But again, the staff has given a recommendation against egress on your part of the community. Right. I'm glad you all are here to uh, show your concern. That's good. Thank you. Sure. It is confusing. They've been discussing and planning. We're confused. There's three different versions, but that's why we're having a public hearing. Mm -hmm. There is no meetings that you don't know about. This is it. Mm -hmm. And there's been planning commission meetings. So. so let me just understand something. So when you deliberate on these today, are you deliberating on each individual one and then coming to a conclusion? I can tell it's going to unfold, but they're going to be discussing all these options. Okay. You're, yeah. you're going to hear it in a public hearing today. Okay. So you may cherry pick certain provisions from certain versions of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's been, um, you know, I share the complexity, uh, the sympathy for the complexity of these issues. I spent all of today running through scenarios on different properties around town to see how this would impact it if, if certain things were done in 2019-12 and in 2019-13, and um, you know, and it's it's not an easy thing to wrap our arms around. And I think even some of the planning commission uh, members that are out there would would say that uh, uh, that it was very tough to to work their way through this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually got public math in it, you know, so it, uh, it gets uh, complicated. <laughs> yeah, I was looking for some now. differential equations, but, you know. I mean. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, and it uh, it's even after going through, you know, basically for the last couple of months trying to wrap my arms around it, I like I said, I share the sympathy, and I've gotten to the point where even a simple question gets complicated right. uh, because there's there's going to be a lot of discussion tonight about this up, up here at the council table. But we do understand the uh, dilemma of the Hill Street um, crowd that has shown up numerous times uh, with, with great concerns. Uh, the mayor is right. Uh, this is about the entire downtown zone, right. uh, you know, as opposed to one individual property. Sure, sure. So uh, all I would say is when you go through this, if you're going to look at the various combinations and cherry pick things that seem to make uh, appropriate sense, just try to do it in a bounding manner such that you won't have these extremes where you're going to have somebody come in uh, with a 110 unit development in the middle of a historic district and lo and behold, it meets all of the, the ordinance. I mean, something seems at odds with that. Mm -hmm. Greg, and part of the issue is it's going to be discussed in the public. If they would have discussed this all before the public and then given you a finished document you could probably clearly understand, then they'd be breaking the law. We have to do this. In OK. Well, that's, that's why you're seeing the confusion, because they're going to hammer it out here right now tonight okay. in front of your eyes. And also, if this is passed, Tom, correct me, there's 30 days. Uh, it's 30 days before it becomes 
Uh, I'm sorry, what? Is it, is it 30 days before this would take effect where there's a, a chance to be challenged? No. Is that not ordinances? No, the ordinances, okay. if passed, uh, mm -hmm. go to the mayor for either approval or veto. And I have how many days to? Well, it, the ordinance would take effect if passed 20 days after the ultimate approval of the ordinance, whether it be by means of mayoral signature or an override of the mayor's veto. Okay. So there's time afterwards, too. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for hearing me out. Thanks. Quickly, I apologize. I feel kind of like my neighbor. I, I didn't intend to speak, and I'm not sure exactly what I'll say other than um, Matt Burnett, 101 Sunset Avenue. Um, I find it a little disingenuous that we keep talking about the whole town. I agree that these apply to the whole town. I understand that. But the only people I see here that have vested interests are the gentleman and the young lady over here who have a vested interest in this. I don't see other business owners. I don't see anybody else in the town that's out here with an opinion on this. So please at least understand when you talk about these things and you say, it's not about that, it's about that. Mm -hmm. And these things, the quality of life that we have in Mount Airy is something that I've lived all over the world, and I've never found this place. This is a miracle to me. This passes, and instantly, myself and our neighbors, the flight of people out of that area. I can move anytime I want. Most of us can. We're there because we love Mount Airy. We love this spot. But you take away that quality of life. You impact it that dramatically. You destroy that whole area. You know, questions I asked in the past about what has happened the other times that this company has come in and put this high-density stuff into a community. What kind of follow-up has been done about what happened to those communities? What was the aftermath in those areas? And there's nothing. There's no information on that. There's no follow-up. These people that have done this before, who know the business of this, provide no detail about that because when they're done building it, they're gone. And it's me and my neighbor's job to deal with the aftermath and the complexity of it. We were all here last year. There was a scheduled meeting that was going to take place over at the firehouse uh, location. And that was then canceled. There was no follow-up to what would come next. So these conversations about how everything has been clear and easy to understand for us, no, we are very passionate. And the fact that so much of this is coming in the last week is a surprise that it is this far that we're at this point is it adds a very, very negative pallor to the whole thing. It starts to seem like uh, this has moved very quietly for a very long time, and now all of a sudden it's moving fast. And so I just... I implore you to consider the much bigger aspect. Everybody would love to see that area developed. Nobody likes the eyesore. There is nothing good for our community about it sitting there the way it is. But the, ne the right thing has to be the right thing. And if we keep bending and bending and changing what makes Mount Airy Mount Airy in order to fit something in there, we've missed the point. So thank you. Appreciate the time. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else to speak to this ordinance? All right, with that, we'll call this hearing closed. And we'll jump right into our next hearing. And this is a resolution to transfer town property consisting of approximately 0.18 acres located along South Main Street at or near the corner of Ridgeside Drive. And it's resolution 2020-1. And um, you'll better know it as the Chick-fil-A resolution. So how many people are here to talk about the potential uh, surrender of property for uh, Chick-fil-A for sale? So uh, hold up your hands, please. All right, we will uh, once again keep try to keep it to uh, three minutes, and uh, you can step up to the podium and speak your mind. So this is good. Okay, he's yeah. got it. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the record, Jay Brooks Leahy, Delaney Leahy, Curtis and Brophy. Uh, I represent Chick-fil-A, and we're here tonight to address uh, this proposed ordinance. Uh, with me uh, uh, is Joe Calagara from the traffic group, uh, Andrew Stan Stein and Dan Hanley from Bowler. So if people have questions, they're here as well to answer any questions. Obviously, we're in support of this. This is really fairly simple. Um, Chick-fil-A is very much interested in building uh, a restaurant at this location. There is an opportunity uh, for Chick-fil-A to purchase some additional property that the town owns that is really of no particular use to the town. Uh, it's a great benefit to Chick-fil-A. Um, and 
what I would say is without this property, uh, we have a 3,296 square foot uh, restaurant with 24 parking spaces and 26 stacking spaces. With this extra property, uh, we have a slightly larger restaurant, 4,001 square feet. We have 37 parking spaces, not 24. 32 stacking spaces, uh, not 26. So it's a big improvement to the, to the plan. Um, I think there's been some tweaks to it, which we're OK with. Uh, I think there's been a request to make it slightly smaller. And uh, Barney, I believe you spoke with um, Andrew Stein of Boulder. We're OK with that, with that tweak. So basically, that's it. Um, happy to answer questions if there are any. Okay. Or our team is, ha is happy to answer. How soon might we see Chick-fil-A in this community? Those Andrew, we're moving pretty fast, aren't we? Huh? Does he need to come you forward? You can tell him and he can tell. <laughs> come on forward. All the fourth graders are going to ask when we go out there. Um, this, week. this is not my three minutes. He gets another three, right? <laughs> no, I don't need that. Uh, Andrew Stein, Bowler Engineering, uh, address uh, 901 Delaney Valley Road in Towson, Maryland. Um, I mean, right, right now we've submitted the, the concept site plan that's under review. We received some comments from the town. We're waiting on some, some comments from the, the the county as part of their review, as well as the stormwater concept review. So um, Chick-fil-A plans to move forward with this as expediently as process as possible, working through the, you know, the, the appropriate um, plan approvals related to the site plan, concept site plan going to planning commission, the, the technical documents. So um, I, I can't speak to, you know, the exactly when, but I mean, that, that, that process is going to take us, you know, roughly the, in the eight, eight to 12 month range, then, you know, Chick-fil-A would move to um, constructing, you know, constructing and, you know, ho you know hopefully, you know, getting through all those approvals, constructing and, and opening the facility. Okay. So spring? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Two years. Yes. Two years. <laughs> for, for, yeah, first quarter, 2020. <laughs> If y'all want to take a seat, if we need to pull you back up, we will. Uh, Thank you. Are there um, citizens who would like to make a comment? Okay, we have one. Uh, Gary Fry, 4021 Twin Arch. Um, I, I, I hear a lot of we're pro-business in this town, but I also want to make sure we're talking about adding 60 vehicles into an area that's got a traffic problem already. There's nothing in this agreement that says they're going to do any capital improvements. So they get this land for a dollar, and there's no guarantees that we get the town gets anything out of it other than a crowded business in a very dangerous intersection. So uh, my personal opinion is this should have been as a proffer deal, where a written agreement for capital improvements was in place in exchange for the land. So I just wanted to put that out. Okay. All right. Thank you. It, it'll thoroughly go through planning. It hasn't even been through planning yet, so they'll have to do all the site layouts. All right. Uh, anyone else to speak about? Elizabeth, you made all the trouble to come to this meeting. You better get up there and say something nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first council meeting she's been to since since I got on the council. Really like Chick-fil-A, and I would like a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> want a number one with no pickles and a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> Just like you. <laughs> Amazing. All right, uh, anyone else? OK, with that, we'll go ahead and call the public hearing for the Chick-fil-A resolution uh, closed. And we'll give it a couple minutes, and uh, how about we start our uh, council meeting at 45, 745. Thank you. you guys ready? <laughs> Anybody excited out there? OK. Uh, we're going to call to order the uh, town council meeting February 3rd, 2020 of uh, Mount Airy, Maryland. OK. Uh, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, 
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, uh, Councilwoman Reed, I believe there's a presentation. Just real quick. Sure. Good evening. I stand in front of you tonight as well as my colleague, Councilwoman Pam Reed, because many women before us fought for women to be enfranchised into the political process. It took 17, 72 years for this message to become a reality, and in August of 1920, Congress ratified the Constitution by adding the 19th Amendment. The amendment guaranteed and protected the women's constitutional right to vote. On January 28th, Mayor Rockenberg read a proclamation declaring 2020, as Councilwoman is proudly displaying it, as the Year of the Woman 2020 at an event that was held right here in our town hall. This officially kicked off a year-long celebration honoring the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. Our celebrations this year will remember the women that came before us, as well as the women who currently are in a wonderful town of Mount Airy who make our town a better place. Councilwoman Pam Reed will now let you know what these celebrations will be so you can mark your calendars for these fun and upcoming events not to be missed. So Year of the Woman is an opportunity for us to engage and empower women within the community. Uh, so we have formed a planning committee um, which consists of local leadership, um, volunteers from the community, locally owned, women owned businesses to, to help us kick off this entire year celebration. Um, so as Councilwoman Washabaugh mentioned, we had a dedication ceremony here last Tuesday where Mayor Pat read the proclamation. Um, we have a Dress for Success fashion show on Sunday, October 4th at the Lynx at Chaladon. Um, we hope to, pending approval of course, close Main Street for about an hour on August 16th, line Main Street with all of Mount Airy's great women and take a historic aerial photo. Um, there is some talk that we're going to try and take this countywide um, and actually have all the municipalities in the county take an aerial photo on that day at the exact same time. Um, so we're working on that. Um, we're going to do an educational series on Facebook. Um, Part of the process is not forgetting the struggle that sort of got us here to this centennial anniversary. Um, and we're also going to dig deep into the community and find historic women who have impacted our past, present, and future um, and spotlight them as well uh, throughout the year. So we're really excited. We have a lot more coming. Um, so like us on Facebook, keep watch, and we'll keep you posted. Yay. All right, uh, next on the agenda is speakers, and we have noticed that our county councilman, uh, Steve McKay, is in the room, and uh, he'd like to say a few words to us. It's always good to see him here. Well, thank you very much. Um, I always feel like I should be apologizing for not being seen more often. <laughs> uh, I do enjoy coming out to your meetings, though, just because, I mean, you guys pack the house. We don't get this at, at the, at the yeah, county level. Yeah, the light. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, they pack the parking lots. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for giving me a few moments. I just thought I'd uh, uh, mention a few things that's going on at the Frederick County level. So I'm uh, Steve McKay. I'm county council member for the Frederick County uh, for District 2, which is the southeast quadrant of Frederick County, uh, including Mount Airy. A um, couple of big things coming up uh, at the county level. First of all, I, I thought I'd mention binding arbitration. So our professional firefighters union uh, the, for Frederick County, they uh, took an issue to um, a, a charter amendment uh, in 2018. It was passed resoundingly, 70%, which did two uh, big things. Um, first of all, it expanded the scope of um, what can be negotiated in collective bargaining to include um, working conditions. But most importantly, it brought about a requirement for binding arbitration. Basically, binding arbitration means that um, 
The county executive, the administration is negotiating a contract with the firefighters union. They get this close, but not to a point of agreement. Then they make their best and final offer, and then they hand the decision over to a neutral, neutral arbitrator who will then make a binding decision uh, upon the county. So our job at the council was to implement an ordinance to provide for what was called for in the Charter Amendment. We're working through that process right now. It was just introduced um, uh, last week, officially. We're having a public hearing on February 9th at 7 p.m. So if you're interested in this, um, come out and tell us all about it. It's a very complicated process. And we're already getting a lot of heat um, because we're apparently not doing it good enough. So welcome to my world. <laughs> um, yeah, but you do. Um, we have another interesting uh, topic of discussion that's coming up. Uh, our councilmen, um, council members, Hagen and Fitzwater, are bringing forward a climate emergency resolution for Frederick County that stipulates a variety of concerns about the state of our climate and what the county can uh, do about it. And part of it will be setting up a working group to come up with recommendations uh, for um, implementation by the county. So that's going to be an interesting discussion. I know a lot of people have a lot of, well, there are a lot of people that share various points of view about the climate, man's role in climate change, all those things. And you're going to hear all of it uh, spoken about with respect to this resolution. So stay tuned for that. Steve, when sure. is that meeting going to be? Um, that's going to be scheduled for workshop. I believe that could be on the workshop schedule for February 9th. So February 9th, I think, was a, a workshop. And then we have a public hearing at 7 o'clock, which I believe is going to be for the abiding arbitration. So okay. I'll double check that. And if I'm incorrect, I'll send a note. OK, yeah. thanks. And um, I guess the last thing I'll talk about, uh, we, have, we have the thing called the school construction mitigation fee. Uh, this was a, uh, an ordinance implemented back in 2012, which um, and it's appropriate because you're talking about your adequate public facilities ordinance tonight. So at the county level, um, there was a desire by members of our development community that if they failed the school test back in 2012, what would happen would be one of two things. Either they would stop building, or they would wait, um, or they would um, pay to provide the school capacity that was required, or they were given then a third choice, which was to keep building and write incremental checks for the cost of capacity needed by each of those additional houses. Um, and personally, I always thought that was a horrible public policy because it allowed large developments to keep going forward into crowded school districts. All right. And we've been living with that. Those agreements were locked into long-term contracts. There have been a number of efforts to try to keep the fees at, up to pace with the rising cost of school construction. It largely has failed. And we're trying to do some catch-up right now. So I'm bringing forward a, uh, an ordinance to do that. And it's going to be. Um, it's going to be very contentious, because each time this has been tried, it's been very contentious. But I think we have the votes this time. So that's all I have. One question here, Steve. It's been brought to my attention that due to the redistricting that Cal, no, excuse me, I'm living with Cal County, the Frederick County Public Schools have done recently that some of the schools in the Mount area, area might be at or close to capacity. Could you have Frederick County Public Schools send us the, uh, n the capacity numbers for the upcoming school year starting in the fall of 2020? Sure, sure. Um, I don't think that's the case. Uh, um, it's, it's just at close uh, to capacity, particularly on the elementary school level, I heard. Yeah, right now, there's 475 students at Twin Ridge Elementary. And next year, that will change. There'll be 600. They redistricted. Yeah. So with that said, we'll be pretty much at capacity. So that's the concern for us, because if we do have any new development, then that may mean portables, so which you know we, we don't want to see. Oh, I completely understand your concern. I mean, I, so it's old history now, but 2012, 2014, I was getting up there arguing about each and every one of those development proposals that we're bringing. All you had to do was look ahead towards what it was right. going to do to the schools, and we're seeing it now. Um, and I know, and specifically with respect to a Trinridge, they needed to shift students out of Green Valley 
yeah, because Green right. Valley last year was at 110% of capacity, mm -hmm. um, right. and so they shifted the boundary on the uh, the eastern side there. Yeah. So now, when yeah. you when you are oh. going to be, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to no, interrupt you, but I'm when you are voting on that, no, not is at all. That, I mean, when do you expect to be voting on that? We won't be voting. This is purely um, Board of Ed. No, no, no. I mean, no. your ordinance. That you're oh, okay. Into. I've got to get it onto the workshop calendar. Um, I'm hoping to get it onto the calendar in February. Uh, our calendar is kind of tight, particularly for something that's going to require a, um, a, a good chunk of time. Um, I had originally hoped that we would get it on the workshop calendar for February 25th. Unfortunately, it looks, unfortunately, it looks like I need to travel for work that day, so I'm hoping to squeeze it in the week before, but hopefully our council president isn't listening since she hasn't authorized that yet. Okay. But um, no, I want to get on the council on the calendar as soon as possible. I want to get going on it. Perfect. Would you be so kind to just send us an email when that gets on the calendar? So if we'd like to, you know, yeah. participate in that, we could. Well, and just so you know, so you know our process. So we start off with a workshop, and that's basically our ability to talk with um, staff over a, an idea with legislative implications. Mm -hmm. You know, whether the staffs bring it forward or a uh, council is bringing it forward. Uh, we accept public comment on those topics. Uh, the next step is we have what's called a first reading, which is just the very formal introduction of a bill. It's usually just a few moments of you know introducing the bill. Then the next big step is the public hearing. That's what we call our second reader. And that's where that's the, uh, the primary opportunity for the public to come in to then help influence the, um, the legislation before we finally vote on it. But I do think it is important at the workshop level because the more uh, people we hear from at the workshop level, the more we can, it can influence the drafting even before it's um, introduced. Thank so, you. You bet. All right, well, thank you very much. All right, thank you, thank Steve. You. Thanks. It's good to see you. All right, uh, next we made some time available for the uh, members of the Growth Development Task Force to discuss the town survey. Would someone like to uh, step up to the podium and discuss that? Good evening, everybody. My name is Wendy, and I am the chair of the Growth Test Survey. Uh, I just want to let you know that we started this survey in uh, May of 2019. At this point, the survey has been printed and mailed by SK Printing, a local business right here in Mount Airy, to just over 7,000 residents. As of this morning, over 730 of them have been returned, which is just about 10% in the first week. Uh, yard signs and flyers have been ordered and they will be distributed once arrived and our plan is in place um, from our next meeting, which is tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. in this very room. Um, citizens that are here this evening, we do encourage you to take the time to fill it out. We turn it in the prepaid envelope that is included in the survey and please make your voices heard. Council members, we urge you to discuss this with your commissions. Um, remind people to fill them out and send them back in. And I would like to thank Katie and Gina for all of the help that you have provided us. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, it's thank you. Good thank you. Thank you. Are the, uh, the other members of that task force, will you hold your hands up so we can see you? Thanks. So, thanks, Mark. So, I have one, one quick question. There were some recent uh, mail thefts, and I know we've traded emails back and forth. And Gina, are we going to be posting something that anybody that thought their survey may have been impacted by the recent thefts to please contact us? And then if we do not see their surveys, we'll know they were, in fact, impacted. Okay. I think that's what we were coming up with. We had to do something. So they're popping up more and more. It's tomorrow. Okay. All right, uh, next is the approval of the council uh, meeting minutes. Uh, for January 20 of the uh, town council meeting um, for January. Would anyone like to make a motion on this? I'll make a motion. Uh, Jason's made a motion to Second. approve. Carl has seconded. Uh, any discussion? All in favor is aye. 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 That's unanimous. All right, next we're to the uh, Mount Airy Police Chief Reitz monthly report. Good evening. It's Chief Reitz, the Mount Airy Police Department. Um, did submit the Mary Police Department monthly report to the town council and staff for review uh, this evening. 
Uh, during the month of January, we've handled 977 calls for service. Uh, as far as traffic enforcement, during the month of January, we conducted 129 traffic stops. We issued 54 citations, 109 warnings, 30 safety equipment repair orders. We made one DUI arrest and four other traffic arrests for driving while suspended and other related uh, charges. Uh, for criminal enforcement, during the month of January, we made nine criminal apprehensions and took 68 investigative reports. Um, understand last meeting there were some questions regarding to what a part one offense is um, and I took upon myself to put it in the monthly report describing what part one offense is in but to enlighten everybody here basically what a part one offense is it's those crimes that's required to be reported to the FBI as part of the uniform crime reporting program or what they commonly refer to as the UCR uh, these offenses are what is considered serious crimes that occur regularity regularly throughout the country and they're most likely to be reported to the police departments and the part one offenses are defined as criminal homicide rape robbery aggravated assault larceny theft motor vehicle theft and arson so uh, to kind of recap 2019 we handled 121 part one offenses in the town of Mount Airy um, most prevalent was Larceny, which we handled 99 incidents of larceny. Uh, we handled 16 breaking and enterings, and we handled three aggravated assaults and two motor vehicle thefts and one robbery. Um, as far as the month of January is concerned, we handled four part one crimes, uh, and they were limited to two larceny thefts and two larceny shopliftings. Uh, as far as part two offenses, these are less serious in nature, but they're still required to be reported for UCR purposes. Uh, these crimes consider, are considered other assaults, forgery and counterfeiting, fraud, embezzlement, stolen property, vandalism, weapons violations, uh, prostitution, com commercial vice, uh, sex offenses, drug abuse, and so forth. Uh, we handled 14 part two crimes during the month, uh, and that consisted of four simple assaults, a CDS, uh, uh, controlled dangerous substance uh, incident, two frauds, a one forgery and counterfeiting, one DUI, uh, one offense against family and children, two sex offenses, one vandalism, and one other all other offense. Um, also, just a couple of significant events that we go over as far as the month. Uh, I believe the mayor already mentioned it. We did have an incident where several neighborhoods or in the Sterling Glen community, several residents in the Sterling Glen community uh, were victims of thefts from their mailboxes. Um, we're in the process of that investigation. It's been turned over to our criminal investigation division. Um, we're asking if anybody of any residents have any uh, type of surveillance footage or video that they might have received from a home surveillance system or a ring doorbell, if they could contact our police department uh, and speak with uh, Detective Kelly. Uh, also, there was a second degree of assault where, uh, which occurred on Route 27, East Ridgeville Boulevard where a motorist was assaulted by another motorist and then they took off uh, down the highway. So if anybody has any information or might have witnessed that, we would ask that they reached out, reach out to contact the police department as well. Uh, additionally, there was two incidents uh, of uh, overdoses invo involving opioids during the month. Uh, that's in the report. And also I did submit to the uh, council uh, the Community Policing Program annual report that's submitted to the state of Maryland, the Maryland Police Training Commission, uh, as far as our program in Mount Airy. Uh, if you recall, last year it was our first year as a police department that we submitted ours, and we were recognized by the Maryland Police Training Commission as being a uh, being a hallmark in that area and more of an example to go to go by. So, congratulations. Hopefully, similar results again this year. So, but I also submitted that to the council for their review. And does anybody have any questions? Yeah, you had mentioned Sterling Glen, also Summit Ridge. Was Summit Ridge, yes, yes, that's okay, correct. You'll make sure Summit Ridge people hear that out there. And also, a, a good comment was made at, during citizen comments about instead of just numbers, actually p comparing percentages to we are doing better this month or worse this month or this quarter or semi-annually. And that is a question in the survey if they'd like to hear more from our chief if they'd like to see some more stats. And I know that you were looking at it because we don't have a statistician, statistician on Correct. staff. Right. And if you could actually do something along those lines, because when somebody hears we had 330 blanks 
they have no reference for that. So Correct. are we up, down, are we moving in the right direction? Do we have to take more action in a certain area? So okay. hopefully you can give us an update on that and we'll get some feedback from the survey. Certainly. Chief, can you just um, speak briefly about the canine that uh, has it gone through any training? Is it uh, our, our canine? We, we, matter of fact, went in service this past week, and he's already made his first drug arrest. I guess we'll keep him. He's in good shape. He's done better than you, Councilman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was supposed to look for drugs, but I will. <laughs> All right, thank you, Chief. All right, uh, we're to Bruce Walls with the Mount Airy Volunteer Fire Company report. Welcome back. Thank you. For the month of uh, January, rescue calls, 105 in Carroll, 40 in Frederick, 2 in Howard for a total of 147 rescue calls. Fires, we had 21 in Carroll, 7 in Frederick, uh, 1 in Howard, and 3 in Montgomery for a total of 32 fire calls, which resulted in 126 calls for service in Carroll, 47 in Frederick, 3 in Howard, 3 in Montgomery for 179 emergency responses. Uh, this Friday, the auxiliary will begin their Friday community dinners once a month, and they'll be off and running, so please support the auxiliary because they support the fire company. And on the 16th, we'll be having, as usual, our uh, monthly Big Country Breakfast. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we're down to community concerns, citizen comments. Uh, is there anyone who would like to comment on anything outside of what our public hearings were about and uh, and things like that? Is there anyone got anything? All right. Well, then we'll move uh, move on down. So we're into uh, ordinances and resolutions. Uh, ordinance 2019-12. That's the APFO open space. And this is up for adoption tonight. Uh, for my fellow council members, uh, and and just so you all, uh, so the citizens know it, uh, in our packages, we get everything stacked up. And, and for this ordinance, there were three renditions that were in the package. The first was the original one. Uh, the second one, was written with the recommendations at the Planning Commission. And the uh, third one is one that I asked the attorney to draft uh, that kind of met somewhere in the middle of those two. Um, at that point, I think it might be, um, John, have you got a copy of the uh, Planning Commission recommendation report? But do you have the, uh, this report? Yeah. Yes. Could you mind go ahead and reading that? Sure. Yeah. yeah, so this, this uh, report was uh, sent to uh, Mayor and Town Council on 12-20-2019, Planning Commission, from the Planning Department, recommendations for the Planning Commission on 11-25-19 related to ordinance 2019-12, Planning Commission Recommendations, Town Council on Ordinance 2019-12. Uh, during our Planning Commission meeting, Scott Sergio mentioned uh, adding the extinguishment of the special exception 2016-23, the adoption of the ordinance, and the adoption of the ordinance 2019-12 as written, exempt John, are you sure you got dash 12s? Report? Yeah, he's reading it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here's, Here's the copy we have on time. I'm sorry, go ahead. It, it may not be correct. Yeah, hold up. All right, uh, go ahead. 
Okay. Um, so going back to uh, as written, uh, exempt with the complete. Uh, Okay, let me start all over. Okay. Yes, then. Um, so, uh, Planning Commission Member Scott Sergio mentioned adding to added the extinguishment, uh, extinguishment of the special exception 2016-23 and the adoption, I forgot to put in there, and the adoption of ordinance 2019-12 as written except with the complete uh, exception of all parcels within the downtown zone for open space requirements. Bill Butt seconds the motion Planning Commission open this recommendation rec recommendation for discussion and public comment. After discussion and public comment, a vote was taken. Planning Commission took a vote on Ordinance 2019-12. Three Planning Commission voted yes with the addition of the exclusion of the downtown zone from these requirements. Scott Sercho, Bill Butts, and Roxanne Hemphill. The remaining Planning Commission voters members voted no. Leslie Dick Dickinson, Lindy Caramate, and Judy uh, Olger. Olinger. Olinger, thank you. Um, this created a tie vote, which uh, was then decided by town, town Council Member Liaison Pamela Reed with yes. That would be four yeses and three noes from the Planning Commission related to their rendition number two as it is in the packet with all the purple excluding basically removing all open space requirements in the downtown zone okay thanks john that's mine great can i just say one thing larry yeah, yeah so i just want to make sure that all the people that spoke tonight i share your pain about the confusion my eyes are crisscrossed after reading this 500 times, but are we all on board now that the one that he was just talking about that was voted by the Planning Commission, a vote of four to three, is the one that has the purple? Okay, I just want to make sure that everybody's following. Thank you. Okay, all right. So uh, version one applies to all the downtown zone, okay? Uh, including small properties down to 0 0.03 acres. So all properties are included in the in version number one, and that's the one that was introduced um, prior. Okay, the second one is the one that was um, based on the Planning Commission's recommendation. It eliminates the downtown zone entirely from APFO requirements. Okay, version three is one I had drafted and uh, basically takes it down to properties. It exempts properties that are smaller than 15,000 square foot, which is roughly a third of an acre. So smaller properties would remain exempt from the APFO. However, properties that are bigger than 15,000 feet would um, be able to reduce the amount of open space that is required if they add a commercial component to the uh, to the property. So in other words, it can't be pure residential. They would have to uh, start adding commercial, and as they add a commercial to the property, it would slowly reduce the amount of, uh, uh, of open space that would be required on that property. So that's, that's the difference between the three versions that we're looking at up here. And with that in mind, uh, what I'm going to try to do is, uh, is make a motion to approve 2019-12 with the following amendments that basically take it to the, uh, uh, that apply a 15,000 square foot uh, limitation on this. So, if you want to pull the one that has a smaller writing on it. And I'm going to go page by page with the uh, modifications. 
And we'll start on page three of eight, 2A. And 2A will read, only for developments located in the downtown zone with lots less than or equal to 15,000 square feet, the parks and open space requirement will be fully exempted. So again, that takes the, the smaller lots in town and exempts them. And then on page four, uh, A becomes B, top line. And it now reads, only for developments located in the downtown zone with lots greater than 15,000 square feet in accordance with the requirements set forth in the code applicable thereto, a development project may be granted a waiver under the following subsection as follows. Okay, all this I believe is in the um, uh, original, okay? And that goes down to, and there's a formula in there that basically what it says is that um, um, for every um, certain amount of commercial that you add to it, we're able to drop back from the APFO requirement. And the standard APFO requirement is three acres for every 100 people that are added. Okay, So we're going to see if they add a commercial component, then we start reducing that number, Okay, that, that acreage that's required. That's to encourage commercial development in the downtown zone. Okay. All right, on page five of eight, it becomes, uh, let's see, generally gets moved and it, okay. The A percentage of open space must be reserved as detailed in the section as generally based on housing density. Now we're on page six of eight. We have a number two now that says, only for developments located in the downtown zone with lots less than or equal to 15,000 square feet, the parks and open space will be fully exempted, okay? And then, um, then two becomes three, and three reads, developments with the residential component located in the downtown zone with lots greater than 15,000 square feet in accordance with the requirements set forth in the code applicable thereto shall provide open space as follows. And then we go into the formulas again that basically reduces the requirement for open space as they increase the commercial ratio. Okay. And I believe... I believe that's the last one. Okay. All right, so, so my motion is to approve 2019-12 with those amendments. And my question is, is there a second on that? All right, seconded by Councilwoman Reed, and now we can go into discussion. So uh, who's got something to say? I guess I'll start out the 2019-12 as amended is, I believe, a good balance between what the Planning Commission recommended and what is what the town needs for the development of the downtown zone. Yeah. Um, Councilwoman Washby, you got anything? Yes, um, I'm in favor of this amended version. Um, I'm not in favor of exempting all the downtown zone um, uh, parcels due to the fact that if the reason why we have APFO is to make sure that we have infrastructure in place that we're not going to be, you know, um, having our schools overburdened, our streets overburdened, and at this point we don't have enough uh, sports facilities, we don't have enough parkland uh, for our residents. We're deficient in that, and I, I feel as though for us to say that they wouldn't have to, and this is for any downtown 
zone area that's greater than 15,000 square feet, um, it would be to the detriment of our residents. If you have more residents because you're not putting commercial on a lot of this property that is now zoned for commercial slash residential, then you're increasing the amount of people that will be in this town, which makes our infrastructure more of a deficit. And as we just heard from uh, our, our Frederick representative, you know, at this point they've redistricted Twin Ridge Elementary. So any, any children that would be in any of these new residential slash commercial areas would be more than likely uh, attending Twin Ridge. That's an issue. There would be more children that would need more sports facilities and more park fields, um, you know, for sports activities. That's an issue. So this addresses that, and I feel it's a fair compromise. There are smaller properties where they just can't meet at APFO um, uh, for open space. So I, I think that we're, we're compromising and I think we're compromising and everybody will benefit from it. So I'm in a, um, approval of ordinance number 2019-12. Uh, this end, uh, comments? Um, yeah, just a couple quick questions and then comments. Um, the 15,000 uh, square foot, um, where, where did that general number come from? Did you... Um, look at other properties around downtown, downtown and, and compare that? Yeah, uh, some examples. I, I don't know if you've seen this or not, Jason. It's a uh, document that basically has all the downtown properties uh, listed on it. And, uh, you know, an argument could be made that it got drawn at 20,000 or 15,000, but there is a, a point um, in the uh, in the list of the uh, properties where you definitely go into the larger properties that include things like uh, uh, the uh, the rail yard property the bank building property the uh, um, Calvary United Methodist is uh, is in that group as well and uh, and so as the MHW Realty uh, property, which is over on the cold storage, the old cold storage area. So uh, 15,000 was uh, a breaking point that got us uh, right to around a third of an acre, and, and that's why I picked it. Uh, if you want 20,000, uh, then you, you know, you're drawing the line at the half acre. Uh, you know, and, and that would not be the end of the world, but, you know, as I drafted, I thought 15,000 was a good number, and I had uh, uh, talked to the staff about it, and they felt that was a good number as well. So the 15,000 would be a viable measurement for the bank building and the rail yard that you had mentioned? It's much smaller than the bank, bank building. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, but let me just show you this. And you could see I've, I've got the 20,000 square foot line listed, and Basically, everything on that page that you're looking at is uh, 15,000 squ uh, square feet or larger. Okay. Um, my other comments uh, res uh, will be reflected around open space as well, and um, previously serving on Parks and Recs, and um, I guess being an active member of many of the youth sports organizations around here and knowing that the lack of uh, field access as well as the parks, um, they really do impact schedules and the children that are trying to utilize the services that um, we can provide these children. And um, I think not only uh, referencing cold storage, but also moving forward um, with Brittany Manor um, and other type developments um, 
you know, who knows what's going to happen with Center Street and with our vision plan. But we certainly have to, to keep aspect and, and not pinpoint um, or place blame on any one property. Development is um, something that will occur um, as long as there is a, a, um, a process that follows. But um, to make sure that our town continues to be the town that many of us um, love so dearly, um, you know, we're going to be expecting Brittany Manor to come online. They're already starting to lay out the plots for that. Um, and that's going to be back on Back Acre as well. Um, so starting to look at other traffic patterns that will focus on the Carroll County side, not only um, impeding on the Frederick side as well. So, I mean, the council altogether needs to make sure that as we are moving forward that our um, APFO, our fields, our youth sports organizations and those types of things won't um, be completely burdened down and um, the residents have to go elsewhere to look for services that we should be able to provide. Um, so uh, that's all I'm gonna, uh, I'll conclude with that, but um, I just wanted to, to figure out where 15,000 sort of came around and, and what we were looking for and moving forward with that. So thank you. Um, so Jason, just to elabor elaborate a little bit um, on the 15,000 square feet, the, the document that Larry had, if it's the same document, it's the one the Planning Commission um, requested from town staff because through the discussion of 2019-12, we did toss around the idea of exempting smaller parcels within the downtown zone. I, I, we were throwing around numbers like 7,500 or 5,000 square feet. Um, but when you looked at that list, it was so few properties. Um, so I can I can understand where the 15,000 kind of came from based on what is on that, that sheet. Um, so I do like 2019-12, the third revision with the 15,000 feet. I think it does allow for infill development downtown, which is obviously what we want to promote. Um, so I'm happy to see this. OK, thank you. Um, so my final comment on this is that uh, you know what's important to us at the council table and what we've heard from the citizens is that um, you know, we do want these downtown properties developed. We're, we don't like driving past the bank building and seeing the broken windows and everything. It's, uh, you know, and uh, so we want to encourage uh, development, but we want to encourage it in scale with the uh, community. And uh, I believe that, that what we've done here by, um, by allowing the smaller ones to, to be exempt from the APFO and, and providing a, a little bit of a leniency toward those bigger properties, uh, we feel that will keep us in scale with commercial to residential. Um, if something is developed purely residential, then basically they have to uh, apply, tell me if I'm wrong, Barney. Uh, if it's purely residential and it's over 15,000 square feet, then they have to abide by the three acres per 100 uh, new residents it would create. True statement. Okay. All right. So, uh, so the only way to um, to go uh, at less than three acres per 100 new residents is to provide a commercial component. And again, that's what we're trying to do to keep keep a scale on it. So, uh, so nothing looks overdeveloped or is indeed overdeveloped and impacting a community uh, more than we would want it to if we lived on that street, okay? All right, so with that, uh, if nobody else has any more comments, we'll, we'll go to a vote. All in favor of 2019-12 uh, as amended, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed? That was unanimous. us into our next can of worms, which is 2019-13, uh, uh, yeah, 
Go ahead. Okay, so this also went to the Planning Commission on 12-20-2019 um, uh, from the Planning Department. Planning Department, the recommendations for the plan from the Planning Commission on 11-25-2019. That doesn't match. Um, related to Ordinance 2019-13. Uh, Planning Commission uh, did meet on this. Leslie Dickinson motioned it, uh, motion to not not to recommend Ordinance 2019-13 as written, and added to extinguish the special exception 2016-23. Judy Olinger uh, second this motion. Planning Commission opened the mo this motion for discussion for public comment. After discussion and public comments, vote was taken. Planning Commission took a vote on the ordinance 2019-13. All members of the Planning Commission member voted yes on the motion with the addition of the extinguishment of special exception 2016-23. And I can read off all the names if you need me to. That's okay. Um, so basically what you're saying is the Planning Commission recommended that 2019-13 only repeal, repeal a text amendment that was done 2016-23. Uh, that was the um, what the planning commission was recommendation. Right, which was is the red copy item, second one in the, yes sir. All right, so we were given two copies of this one. <laughs> we're given the one as presented and reviewed by the planning commission. And then we have uh, one that is redlined uh, that basically uh, dissolves 2016-23 uh, to the best of its ability. So what, Someone would like to make a motion on that. I would like to make a motion to improve ordinance 2019-13 with the following amendments. On page one of five, the red line strike out article two entitled general regulations, section 112-7 entitled off street parking. Also strike out entitled board of appeals, section 112-62 entitled special exceptions go down a little bit farther the la the last line of paragraph two strike and we're striking the language add to permit purely residential projects only by a new special exception next strike is the third paragraph do i have to read all the paragraphs i, think I would say strike. just okay, with okay, the amendments it'll, it'll go quicker <laughs> <laughs> the following is the following is another amendment is to strike the fourth paragraph on page one of five. We're moving to page two of five. It strikes section one. It strikes section 112-7, subsection uh, part B of that section. And on page three of five, it continues striking the remainder of subsection B of 112-7. The next amendment is, it looks like it changes. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Uh, it changes, renumbers section two to section one. On page four or five, it basically strikes all of the wording, the amendment. And on page five or five, it strikes the remainder of that, which is number B. I'll second whatever he just said. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, we'll go into discussion. All right. and, uh, well, for the, I would like to say for the people that are out there that confused with this it is confusing because I did it but basically what this does is it removes the special exception that was allowed from ordinance 2016-23 that allowed purely residential development within the downtown zone that was off of center and prospect streets so this reapplies that what was previously before that amendment 26-2016-23 to all the downtown zone which basically is commercial on the first floor 
and residential above in the downtown zone. Is that a fair assessment? Okay. That's it. Okay. Anybody else got comments on that? Um, I would only say this, so a couple of things. I, I've been open that I haven't supported 2019-13 since it was first in, introduced. Um, probably not for the reasons that a lot of people would expect. Um, I think we can all, my problem with this ordinance has always been that it's been sort of directed towards one piece of property. Um, but when we sit up here, we need to be making decisions for the whole town, or in this case, the entire downtown zone. Um, another issue I have with it is that this particular property does have an active application um, for development. So I don't feel that at this time um, it would be a smart idea to even consider adopting something like this until um, that developer decides to move forward or to, to walk away. Um, you know, we all agree that whatever the density is currently being offered is not suitable and they don't currently meet the APFO standard. So unless they can meet the APFO standard, it can't go forward. Um, so I, I cannot support this. Fair. Good. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Um, I'll just make a comment. What this does uh, is uh, basically adds that commercial component to the downtown zone. Uh, that's where we were trying to go. And, um, and you know, previously, um, before I think all of us were elected, it was, uh, it was changed. So, uh, you know, uh, again, we want the downtown zone developed, but we want it developed to scale. And I think that uh, Carl's amendment uh, gets us there because it, it mandates that commercial requirement in the downtown zone. Okay. So, uh, so, you know, I think it's, uh, I think it's a good ordinance as, as amended. It also uh, encourages commercial development downtown. Yes. And that's something that we, we want to do. Totally agree. So, uh, any more discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, uh, four in favor and one opposed. And motion passes. All right, so now we're down to uh, resolution 2020-1, which is uh, for the town to uh, transfer property. Uh, and this, uh, once again, we're on the uh, Chick-fil-A. So. <laughs> All right, and um, I just want to clarify a comment that was made during the public hearing. Uh, our small chunk of uh, property that is going to be deeded over to the uh, Chick-fil-A uh, is being done so for the amount of $25,000. So the town's actually uh, selling the property uh, in order to uh, uh, facilitate this and provide the added parking and I uh, believe they called it stacking of automobiles. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where we're at on that. So um, someone else like to make the Chick-fil-A motion to approve? I'll, uh, I'll motion for approval resolution 2020-1. Okay. And is there a second on that? I'll second. Do you have a comment? Was, it the, was the motion with the exception of a small part that fronts on the south Main Street that Barney you talked with the developer. Yeah, I can just give you a quick summary on that. Um, okay. uh, when we talked with them, we said we'd want to reserve enough room that if we ever added a, a turn lane there, a sidewalk, grass strip, um, pl plenty of room for us to add in the future. Um, they looked at 25 feet, so they just drew a line at 25 feet. After they drew out their plan, um, they find that they have 13.9 feet between the curb and, and that, that, uh, that line. And um, they really only need 10 feet as far as where the pavement is to the property line. So 
it makes sense for us to hang on to that extra 3.9 feet. That's all. Okay. All right. I will still make my motion to approve resolution 2020-1 with the recommended changes by town staff. Okay. Second. Yeah, I'm still second. Uh, discussion, anyone? There was a concern mentioned by uh, Mr. Fry uh, regarding traffic flows, and that's been a concern with a lot of people in the neighborhood. Let's be very clear that Chick-fil-A is wanted in this neighborhood. Uh, that being said, uh, I think it's important for everybody to understand it will have to go through a planning process. They are very strict about pedestrian flow, traffic flow, stacking of cars from their waiting and drive through lanes. But let's say for some reason, and goodness, we don't want this, we want it to go through. It doesn't happen. Uh, Tom or council, is there any sense in making this contingent upon this going through planning commission and final approval? That would probably protect the, uh, the person that's buying the property as well because they don't want to buy it if they can't get this plan through. But it also gives us protections. So uh, after this resolution, I think the intention is that there'd be a contract, purchase contract that would be drawn up and negotiated between the parties. So all this resolution does is authorize the transfer of the property. What would happen next is a negotiation of the contract. The contract could certainly, as negotiated, contain uh, provisions of that sort. And indeed, if you look at the resolution as it's worded, talks about approval um, under the terms uh, uh, in the proposal attached here to is exhibit B or upon other commercially reasonable terms to be negotiated between the developer and the town attorney and that's what we're referring to this doesn't finalize a contract doesn't finalize their development you know there'd have to be some additional terms obviously or negotiated terms and that could be one of them if you have actually that's probably agreed. a term that they'll want it could be yeah, they're not going to want to land if they don't get approved <laughs> all right is there any more discussion all in favor of uh, resolution 2020-1 as amended uh, say aye right. aye opposed it's a unanimous in one year if the stars keep aligning <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to uh, go to Chick-fil-A here in Mount Airy. So, all right, uh, on to ordinance 2020-3 budget amendment for annual road repaving. And this is only for introduction. And I would move to introduce that. I'll second. Okay, and uh, then move seconded and we'll see that again next month. Okay, next is the 2020-2 uh, water and sewer capacity yield. This is for introduction and adoption. Uh, I'm happy to introduce 2020-2. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody else. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. Okay, all right. Um, Let's see, it's introduced. Is there any discussion on that? I'm looking to the left. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking of something else. I got to bring bring up after in, That's okay. in, in between stuff here. All right. Um, but no, nothing else. All right. Um, uh, okay. Um, all those in uh, favor of, uh, of uh, passing resolution 2020 2, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, bef before we move on to unfinished business, I believe we have a new representative from Frederick County that walked in. Sorry, I, I can't remember your name. I know your face. You're the new county liaison for Jan Garden that took um, Roger Wilson's place. Are you, are you not? You can come up to the podium and say who you are and introduce yourself. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. So, uh, Joy Schaefer, I'm the Director of Government Affairs and Public Policy for the County Executive, the new Roger Wilson, who has big shoes to fill, both literally and figuratively. Um, but I just, uh, I'm here, I 
congratulate you on your incredible turnout. I was waiting in the hall for quite some time. So, um, and um, in your public comment, I think that's phenomenal um, participation. So I just wanted to introduce myself formally. I will pass out business cards later, but um, I am I'm, uh, the liaison for you. Um, I know the county executive wants towns to be successful, so please feel free to call on me. Um, I know you've got some stuff in front of the delegation as well. I work with them um, regularly, so I'm happy to assist in that way also. Thank you. You please, would you please give her our regards, and we appreciate what a great job she's doing. I doing. certainly will. She'll Thanks. appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. It's nice meeting you. Yeah. Larry, I have one more thing for yeah. unfinished, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Um, so I just happened to be uh, driving to Bank of America, and that property uh, sort of stood out to me. And a few months ago, we sort of um, got some of the, the motions wheels greased up and having they started to do some work, but I feel like it's sort of been postponed. Um, is this sort of in reference to what we're trying to do with the blight or anything? Is at that Seven Ridge side? Yeah. We'll go with that. Um, their permit expired on the 23rd. Okay. And so currently they are without a permit. Uh, we've bounced around and I sent something out today that Technically, um, their approval is null and void as well, and we could start all over, but we're not ready to go there yet. We're seeing what the county's going to do and require them to re-up their permit, but they have not applied yet. And I have, a, I have a spreadsheet that I'd be glad to share with you all to show how this has been going on since 2014. And um, we need to get some movement on that, and the, we've, we've made the county aware. Have um, so the town council um, prior to this town council um, granted some money to move a said telephone pole. Have we been at least reimbursed for that yes, dollar that, amount? That money has come back. Thank you. Yes. No other comments. All right. Thank you, Jason. Okay, uh, now we're down to new business. We got the, um, uh, actually the first item on there, Twin Arch Business Park, Lot 19. Uh, we're gonna move that to next month, okay? And, because um, that was not in our packet, so we'll have it in our packets for next month. Uh, next is the 4100 Twin Arch Road Public Works Agreement for approval, and John, do you have a, uh, can you give us some background on that? This, this parcel is the one that's down uh, below Century Ford. It's a, uh, it had an abandoned house on it for a long time. It's very small, kind of an oddly shaped parcel. The house was demolished. Uh, a, pers a person did purchase it, and they went through the site plan approval process through the uh, planning commission. And they're basically proposing a contractor's equipment storage yard. There won't be any type of uh, structure on site. There'll be no water or sewer. It'll be utilized on the site. It'll just be a um, asphalt area supported by the uh, stormwater management. Again, it was approved by uh, the planning commission, and it's going to be a, a storage lot for excess vehicles that are purchased off-site and then resold uh, via on-site or at, through the internet. And there are representatives for the owner here if you need to speak with them. So this is next to Tractor Supply and across from Century Ford? Yep, it's actually down below the Stormwood Imagine Pond, right along Twin Arch Road. Okay. It's a very small, small triangular you, parcel. You, oh, yeah. you <laughs> wouldn't even notice driving by, it looks like it's just an piece of parcel. It's just <laughs> south of Century Drive, right before, I believe, the mobile home park Correct. entrance and Correct. Aaron Drive. Correct. You would drive by it without even noticing it. Okay, thank you. And uh, let's see, I'll make a uh, motion to approve this public works agreement for 4100 Twin Arch Road. Is there a second on that? Okay. okay. All right, uh, Councilwoman Washaba seconds. Uh, any discussion? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, and that's passed unanimous. Thank you. Show me where that is. Oh, 
Oh gosh, you have to sacrifice your mind. Sorry, I gave you that. Sorry, XSA 18 for It's right across from that pond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's. Oh, like it's below. It's even below that mode area. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. I know we just passed this, but where's the owner at? Uh, the owner is not available, but his uh, oh. representative Flacron. Oh, do you mind? Um, do you mind if I? Um, can you just um, just very briefly just explain the nature of your business? It was a little convoluted coming from my planner. Sure thing. Um, I'm the representative for the owner, um, Flagron Shibuya with American Cable Tech. Um, so we will be purchasing and reselling vehicles, not vehicles, um, commercial vehicles, um, commercial equipment. Um, that's Flagron, is your mic on? Is there a green light there? It's really tough to hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Will there be like a, a structure or a fence securing your vehicles at, to, around the perimeter? Yes. Okay. I was. There will I be just, a fence. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't have any. For, I just. I just wanted to know what, <laughs> what exactly you were doing. <laughs> I didn't. All right. So just just for commercial vehicles, I guess. There will be plants around the uh, perimeter too. Okay. Oh, very nice. So it'll look very nice. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's uh, been brought to my attention that possibly I was the only one who did not get a Twin Arch Business Park Lot 19 Public Works Agreement. Did you guys have one? I did. Yeah, I was. It was absent from mine, but I did contact him and was able to get it today. Okay. Mine was on the website. Yeah, I'm to review yeah. this. That's 4100 Twin Arch. This one is uh, lot 19. Oh. I, I did get oh. my yeah. document. Well, since uh, so four four of us have it, and I'm the only one who missed out. True. Okay. All right. Uh, would you guys like to move forward on that tonight? I'm fine with. If you guys are ready, then um, uh, someone can make a motion to approve. Uh, thank you. I make a motion to approve the Public Works Agreement for Lot 19 Twin Arch Business Park. Okay, and is there a second on that? I'll second. Okay, all right. Uh, discussion. Uh, John, did you have anything to talk about on that? Hey, hang on. I thought Lot 19 got moved to March. We're talking about 4100, right? No. Uh, uh, I, I moved backwards because oh. it became my <laughs> understanding that I was the only one who didn't have it in my packet. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You get it. Okay. All right. Go ahead, John. Yeah. So I don't know. Ron Thompson was here earlier. I don't see him in the audience anymore. He is the uh, engineer for that parcel. So that is uh, the new location for Service Master, which currently houses inside the dance studio facility. So they are constructing a new building, and they'll be relocating to that new building. Uh, it did go through the planning commission for and received all approvals from all county agencies and the town. Uh, so this is just to ratify that um, design and to move the forward, move forward with that plan. And um, in relation to the dance building, we're talking center stage. Well, it's the one that off a of backacre circle, right? It's at center stage. Um, I don't really know lot 19, so, in so lot lot 19 is located over by uh, Canyon Contracting on that more of the industrial side, okay. um, away from the residential people. Okay, so it'll fit within that yeah area. it was an approved okay. site plan through right. and it should be uh most of the traffic from that facility would probably go through aaron lane now and not even go to back acre circle well it will but it'll go right instead of turning left and going down towards the residential gotcha. and again it'll also free up additional parking spaces possibly at the at the frank's building that would be really awesome <laughs> i thought it would be nice um, Sounds good. Okay, uh, let's see. We got the motion has been seconded. Discussions occurred, and um, all those in favor say aye. 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 And I will abstain because I have not read it, <laughs> so not sure what's in it. But with four people, that's enough to uh, get this thing done.
All right. Uh, um, now we're down to phase one downtown road improvements from GMB Architects and Barney. <coughs> I believe you have the, uh, we all got a little handout and uh, you can talk us through that if you don't mind. Doesn't show up on my screen, so <laughs> I have to turn around. Um, or I can look at my paper here. So um, very much what we had brought before, there were four options that we had brought to you uh, previously. And um, this was uh, basically taking option three that you had recommended and we moved forward with a, a design from GMB as our consultant, consulting engineer that we have on retainer now. Um, as you can see at the top left, uh, there's a um, starts with a crosswalk because we're widening Center Street at Main Street. Do you need me to point to it? I saw it. Okay. <laughs> um, coming, uh, approaching. So Center Street's at the top. Main Street's at the on the left side. Uh, so if you look at the top, you see three lanes, two lanes are approaching Main Street and have a dedicated left and a dedicated right. Um, you'll have a wider lane um, coming off of Main Street, northbound Main Street onto eastbound uh, Center Street. And that wider lane is so that you could help make that turn. That was a state highway requirement that it'd be a minimum 16 feet wide. Um, what we're looking at, again, we're concentrating more on Center Street less on the other streets. Um, to help define that eastbound lane, um, we're adding curbs at the intersections. Uh, we don't want to put it in front of the buildings because they tend to park, uh, parallel park in front of the buildings. And you also have that uh, parking area um, just behind the gun shack. So we didn't want to block that with any curb. So it would just be a you know, curb at the, at the corner and just kind of help define that line. Uh, we would probably stripe that as well with a white line going up. Um, and then as you come up, we try to keep that lane width uh, pretty wide. So as you approach Cross Street, uh, you can make that turn a little bit easier as well. So I know that was one of the issues. And then you'll see at the top of Cross Street there that at Center Street, uh, it's a hatched area. The idea is to make that uh, more consistent um, slope so that um, again you can go up there without scraping your cars on especially the larger trucks i know the fire company had issues with that um, again this is kind of in preparation for center street going through we, we definitely need the two lanes dedicated lanes going towards main street um i know yeah um, just as you sort of make your way through, we're going to, uh, just for clarification purposes for myself and everybody else, we're going to lose all of the um, head-in parking on Center Street that is across from or next to the, the train depot and along, along Center Street. Is that correct? That's correct. All, all the angle parking would go away. Um, we had... Um, previously put in extra paving and extra parking in the rail yard to help offset that okay. originally. So that was the intent of that. Also, we gain uh, public parking for around the train station that we now own. Um, trying to think. Um, so the other thing about the angle parking was it was very dangerous. A lot of them are very short spaces, and we had trucks that were almost out to the middle line of the road. Mm. Um, so as cars came down, they had to go around them. Right. And then the other thing was um, uh, if you did have big trucks there and a smaller car is trying to pull out, they're backing out into a road uh, from the angle parking. So never a good situation right. to have that. Um, so by trying to encourage people to park in the rail yard with the new paving, has there been any talk about 
adding pedestrian signal at either this crosswalk or the one that is adjacent to the train depot as more pedestrians will be coming from into that sort of area we haven't talked about that no okay um, you'd have to ask the state i believe right it would have to go through state highway it's, it's a good point first. it's a very yeah. good point i mean even yeah. just coming here yeah, absolutely myself yeah. councilman and another uh, pedestrian were sitting there waiting and without the signalization of a pedestrian crossing it's like you almost have to take a step out to get the drivers to stop and so by encouraging more pedestrians to go over there you're now going to to have you know that sort of worry about trying to cross main street or even then center street with more um more traffic so i would just sort of put that on the on the high list okay yeah we can we can reach out to i think they'll have to perform a study yeah, <clears throat> and certainly things have changed that would warrant it yeah i have a question can. barney and it may not make any sense uh and i know we're doing this for the future we're planning ahead is this something that we need now or until center street goes through can we still have parallel parking in one of those lanes or I'm sorry, I still just, have parallel parking yeah, so where right, the second lane is? Yeah, until Center Street goes through. I mean, it's already a bottleneck now, so it might just make sense to, <coughs> to do it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, part of this plan... I've sat there many a time where I wish there was two lanes. Part of this plan is to make Park Avenue one way. And so everybody coming westbound towards Main Street on Park Avenue would get oh, so yeah, rerouted you across the street. screen down. And they would be coming down. down. Yeah. So I hadn't gotten there yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. There we go. So that's why it does have to take effect immediately. So you'll see at the bottom there, um, again, you see the arrows coming from Main Street going up Park Avenue. Um, they would not stop. Uh, they would continue past Veterans, past Cross Street with no stop signs. Uh, veterans Lane would be a one-way. It's really only wide enough for one lane right now, um, coming from Center Street towards Park Avenue. And then to make the uh, loop, they could come back on Cross Street, but Cross Street would remain two-way. Anybody coming from Center Street on Cross Street to that Park Avenue, uh, they would have to stop before they can make a left. They can't make a right at that point anymore. And then anybody coming westbound on Park Avenue, because of that turn, it's not the it's not the best turn, if you would. Um, the idea would be to stop them before they come in too fast and try to make that turn and they end up in the other lane. So it was, the idea is to stop two ways of that three-way intersection. Currently, there is no stop sign, though. Currently, there's a stop sign coming down cross. But not going west on park to make a right on cross. There's no stop sign. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Because most of the traffic would intend to go straight. But we're, st we're eliminating that. Right. right. Hey, Barney, one question here. Mm -hmm. I might have missed it, but when Veterans connects back to park, you have a no right turn sign there. But will there be a stop sign there also where Veterans connects back into park i think the stop sign's already there oh there is okay. so they so they didn't show it as new okay mm -hmm. gotcha yeah Marty, you. i think one of the good point uh points to make and it was councilman uh uh Hushauer's point was it's all reversible yeah. mm -hmm. so yeah as far as the one way and stuff yeah it's it all doesn't close park yes. but it finally moves us into some direction to address the issue and it's all reversible the only thing except that, for going down center street we're just gonna have to do anyway so yeah. yeah the only thing that we'd be adding on park that we would just have to take back out if we had to re wanted to reverse it uh, we recommend it was recommended a curb go in on the south side so that the, the match with the bump out on the north side of uh, park at cross street so you can see this where, where it says do not enter right there um, the reason for that is to help discourage people coming down park, not go straight through. They'll see two, two do not enter signs right there. 
and it also maintains the parallel parking that one of the businesses was concerned about from the original plan. Hopefully, or increase it. State parking. Could be parallel parking also on this. On side both sides, so no, it'll no, actually no, increase it. Honestly, at the last meeting, they did not want that striped. They wanted to leave it open for deliveries. Uh, so we did not strike. We did not show a striping for parallel parking on the Sherry south side. Gates about that. Make sure. I think that's who brought it up. That's who brought it up. Okay, good. So Barney, looking good. at this, even though we lose parking so on yeah. center, it looks like we're picking it up there, right? All right. That so red area. You move into the middle now. Uh, that's. All right. So this area in the red here, next to Cross Street. Uh, we already have parking there. Um, it's just turned the other direction. Uh, so we're not really uh, losing spaces, but we're not gaining spaces. Um, those spaces uh, used to, currently, they back out into, some of them back out into Cross Street. Okay. And since we're adding traffic there, we don't want to continue that. So uh, the idea was to turn that. And there's two-way traffic on that road right there because the residents were concerned about the no left turn, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ask a sequence question. Okay. Uh, I know the fire department was concerned about Cross Street, where it meets up with Center Street. Um, as sequence goes, are we going to fix that that uh, uh, intersection there? Ease the grade on it uh, so that it's suitable for the fire company prior to making Park Avenue one way? So um, we're going to make it as best as we can. Um, that, it's still going to be a slope there. We're just going to try to ease because it goes up steep and then it kind of levels off. We're going right. to try to make that much easier. But we can only go back so far because the entrance into the storage lot um, is not far away. So it, it's going to help. It's not going to make it perfect. Um, the we would definitely do that work uh, probably one of the first things that way they're not impacted by you know traffic coming that we're okay. diverting from park avenue yeah. uh, we would definitely need to add uh, because we're putting more traffic here i think we still need the two lanes coming down center street to main street because now you have more traffic from but park. the fire department can still come up yeah. And then, then the fire company, uh, they have said that um, their concern mostly was going from Main Street on the park uh, right. because they can come back a different route. But that is their okay. shortest route to right. get to, like, the senior homes. Right. And, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to suggest. I was looking for Bruce. Well, I guess he's left, but coming back because no, he's the, just moved in the back he was sleeping. oh there he is uh, <laughs> <laughs> he heard his name <laughs> ah well you're needed in the high high rent district yeah, here in the box seats <laughs> but bruce we're talking about when if you get a call say to wildwood you'd be able to go up park avenue still because it's going to be run, one way and I know that it might be a little bit more cumbersome for you to come down Cross Street, but as far as coming back, you could go out to 27 and down Watersville Road back to. Yeah. Right. The angle. Okay. Okay, now is that being addressed? Yeah, so what, what he's referring to is because um, I go up Park Avenue many times myself every day. Um, if you stay to the left where the cars come down, uh, the more you stay to the left, the easier it is. If you get too close to the right side, of the, then your, your truck's going to turn and uh, like towards the wall. So I, I think that was the concern more. And if so, you want to close it, you don't want to remediate it because it may be. Right, so that was being really left for whatever happens to that site in the future, which may or may not be in the near future. Uh, but in the meantime, we could always put something there to show that you know people are supposed to go up on you know closer to the left side, so it's easier. That fire truck comes through with blaring lights. I pretty much think they got the right of way. So. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> That's true, too. All right. Thanks, Sorry. Bruce. Anything else? Or? No. 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 All right. Well, uh, that was all for informational purposes. It looks like we're moving forward on that. So uh, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, uh, next we're down to the uh, valve replacement project for the Nottingham area, and this is to award the bid. And uh, Barney, do you want to speak, or Brian? I saw Brian back there. Yep. So uh, who wants to speak to this? Let Brian speak. Make, did you say make Brian speak? <laughs> over two seconds. <laughs> oh, it's done. <laughs> It'll be short and sweet. <laughs> ongoing issue that we have out of Nottingham with the valve replacement bolts. Uh, we have multiple counties surrounding us that are taking on this problem. So far we've had six blowout in that neighborhood, so we got to address the problem. Yeah, I think we didn't opt for the better bolts at the time and nobody did and now every, there's a lot of people that are, we went back to the manufacturer Mueller and there's no recourse there, no class action suit, we got to either bite the bullet and replace them. Correct. Okay. Any more questions for Brian? Oh, I'm not sure if I need to direct the questions to Brian or Barney. Or anyone. I'll start with I'll start with uh, Brian. The only thing that I found was a, a couple things, but the quote was from 2019. Do we have something saying from from the Mid Atlantic Utilities that the money that the quote is still yes, still it's good? still good. But do we have something to write? Yes, he back? emailed me back Tuesday and All said right. it was good. All right, that's fine. I just want to make sure we don't see any unexpected consequences from, or pricing but okay cool okay anyone else yep. okay uh, let's see is there a motion to approve um, the uh, valve replacement in Nottingham or the cost of uh, price of two sixteen nine hundred thirty dollars to approve okay. that the town council accepts the bid from Mid Atlantic Utilities for the total bid price of two hundred and sixteen thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars for the bolt replacement project over to Nottingham. Second. All right. Uh, Jason is seconded. And is there any more discussion on this? Um, after the awarding of the bid um, time frame, it will be done by July or June one done before then yes okay and then my only uh, my only other I just letting the residents know if we can get some signs and just say hey this is kind of going on but I will I've already let them know that this project was moving forward yeah well, and a lot of them are worried about like when yeah that's all what I plan on doing is I'll get a hold of mid-atlantic tomorrow find out exactly when they're gonna start and I'm gonna lay out a map to send to the Nottingham residents or at least post it on our website to give them a, an idea of the way that the Army is going to travel through that neighborhood replacing valves. As of right now, and I don't want to give any misinformation, but no, there should be no water loss to any resident out there while this is transpiring. The problem is we don't know till we start digging. Sure. If we remove the dirt and the roadbed off of it, the bolts could blow out. Then it would be an emergency shutdown is a relatively straightforward fix. It takes us about a half an hour once we get there and fix them. So it's a quick fix. It's just we're not planning on turning anybody's water off at this time. Okay. But that will be explained in the paperwork when I send it out. When you post that, uh, just CC me, and then I can post it to social media on our Nottingham Facebook page. Roger that. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you, Brian. Uh, all in favor of uh, approving that expenditure, say aye. 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 Opposed? OK, no, yeah, it was unanimous. Yeah, we are down to the uh, mayor and council reports. And we'll start with uh, Mayor Rockenberg. Thank you, Larry. Uh, so on behalf of the town council and myself, we hope everybody's New Year is off to a great start. We want to pause and reflect on the past decade, the challenges, the triumphs, uh, the wisdom that we've all learned. Uh, 
We hope this was a catalyst for a better tomorrow, so thank you all. Uh, I personally uh, would like to reflect on the past year decade, and I'm both humbled and inspired by life's teachings and the power of friendship, family, and community that we all have. So thank you to those who graciously give of your time uh, to be part of the process, many of you in this room today, and for making a difference in the quality of life of our community. Uh, I'm proud of our many accomplishments that we have done together and look forward to what 2020 holds in store for our town. Uh, you've heard about the survey. You're going to keep hearing about the survey. We are going to go up on the new billboards. I just sent you an email. So uh, we have to share with Basket Bingo, though. They, they actually <laughs> had pushed us, but I was able to negotiate. So take the survey. It's very easy. It takes a few minutes. <clears throat> Don't procrastinate. Let's get it in. We've already got a 10%. We want to beat my old response of 43%. So. Let's beat that one. Uh, events in town, if you look on my report, go on the website, you'll see a link that Gina's done a fantastic job in linking all our events, so go look at that. And I think the uh, big one coming up is the Chocolate Crawl on February 14th, uh, downtown, Friday, February 14th. Uh, hope I didn't steal anybody's thunder there. I may have. Larry, I'm gonna leave the basket being there for you. Winter weather, uh, it's not over yet. I think the groundhog did not see a shadow, but we still could get it. So you all are responsible for clearing your sidewalks within 24 hours. And certainly if it's icy or dangerous, those rules are meant to be flexible, but do your best to keep them clear. Uh, we'd also appreciate if you chip in and clean out the bus stops, clear around the fire hydrants as much as you can. That'll help our first responders get to a home that's on fire that could be yours. That would be very helpful. Also this time of the year with New Year's resolutions, you'll see a lot of people running and on our town streets. Uh, We'd like to remind the runners out there to please be safe, wear something reflective, wear a flashing light, and we'd like to remind our people, our uh, drivers, to please be careful because there is an increase in uh, runners out there. Uh, we are uh, getting ready to go into our budget process, and I'm not going to read the whole process. It is in my mayor's report, but basically it goes to the town commissions. It comes back to the mayor. The mayor reviews it. He gives it to the town council. The town council makes the final decision, gives it back to the mayor. Uh, for implementation. Uh, we're very excited to be doing the If I Were Mayor contest. We tried to get a couple councilmen to go. I don't, Larry, you've been with me one year, haven't you? Uh, yeah, last year. One, it hasn't been. This year, I'm going to double up because you have a daughter in the school and you have the, uh, the youth task force. You're next. Don't you worry. You're coming. <laughs> so, and uh, Gina, what day are we going? It's next week. It's February 10th. Okay. We are going to both Carroll and Frederick counties. Uh, to do the If I Were Mayor contest. And this year's contest is pretty cool. Usually they have a theme. This theme is really open-ended. It says, if I were mayor, I would. That's going to be a tough one. Okay. It's, it's kind of cool. Uh, volunteer opportunities exist. I want to thank Colleen. She actually, instead of just saying they exist and people guessing, we actually put a list. We have two openings on sanitation and recycling. We have two openings on water and sewer. And we have two openings on beautification. So all the other commissions are full, and we're very thankful for that. Uh, hence my lead in to all these great volunteers. But things change, people move on, people get tired. So if you're interested in those other commissions, you can still be in queue. Uh, uh, the Mayor's Community Forum will be held Saturday, February 15th. I did not give a place for the Mayor's Forum. So it'll be right here at Town Hall from 11 to 12. That concludes my Mayor's Report that will be posted, thank you. And for uh, Commission Appointment Recommendations, I am recommending to the Town Council that former councilman Peter Hill, council president, be appointed to the Board of Appeals. He brings a great wealth of information. I'm very excited that he's willing to return and serve. And I'd also like to recommend Mary Beth Obrinsky for the Streets and Roads Commission. I got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Carl seconds, and uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, they're in. Okay, uh, beautification, parks and rec, council member Munder. All right, the meeting was held on Tuesday, January 21st. Uh, it was a very light agenda. We are just happy to report that the 125th Christmas anniversary ornament, the town did one, it, we sold all, almost all of them. We have less than 10 left. We had four. Four left. I wasn't going to say that that low, but just, we had a, we sold all but four of the orna ornaments, which was an excellent turnout for purchasing those ornaments this year. So thank you for, to all who bought those. Um, they went over the park status, the various status of the parks 
around town, which basically it's winter time, so they're just coming along, waiting for spring to continue on doing their wonderful work. The we discussed the budget. Uh, we they are considering this year for Flag Day and Fourth of July. Uh, if you've noticed that during Christmas time, they have put garland up along the fence at Wildwood Park along Park Avenue. This year, they're going to decide or try to put up some type of flag-related or patriotic-related banners on Flag Day and the Fourth of July along that fence line. They also are talking about and considering planting native trees at Watkins Park around the dog park to provide further shade on them. And that's it for the Beautification Commission. The next meeting is February 17th. They are always held on the third Tuesday of the month at Town Hall at 7 p.m. Now move on to the Parks and Recreation uh, agenda. Um, basically, we had two scout-related uh, projects presented to the commission. Uh, Girl Scout Troop 81020 came before, th came before the board to present their bronze award plan, which will be basically anti-smoking signs put up at the entrance to the various parks around town to remind people that currently the parks are a no smoking area. Uh, they will focus on Watkins Prospect and Wildwood. And the signs will say, no smoking, leave no trace, make the world a better place. So we thought it goes along with the motto and it will improve the air quality and ground pollution. Uh, so currently we're just waiting for a proof to be sent to Gina and we will move on from there. Sam Johnson with Boy Scout Troop 460 presented his Eagle Scout project and he will be building a matching dugout at the field at Watkins Park starting sometime this spring or early summer, depending on the game schedule over there. And we also discussed the 2021 budget, and that is about it for Parks and Recs. The next meeting will be February 20th at 7 p.m. at Town Hall. All right, thank you so much. Um, okay, Economic Development Planning Commission, Council Member Reed. Um, EDC met on Monday, January 22nd. They have been working on a new grant called Building a Brighter Future for Small Businesses. Um, we expect the draft grant to be introduced at our next meeting. Um, the second annual Envision Mount Airy tour is scheduled for June 11th. The commission accepted volunteers to sit on the planning committee, so hopefully we'll put um, Gina and her crew back to work pretty soon to make that another successful year. The Farmer's Market um, starts every Wednesday, May 13th through September 30th. And Hometown Chili Cook-Off and Custom Car Show is Saturday, June 20th. EDC will meet again on Wednesday, February 26th. The Planning Commission met on Monday, January 27th. Ordinance 2020-1 was introduced to planning. Um, it's a proposed amendment to the town code creating a new section entitled Mixed Use Development. Planning set a public hearing for 2021 on Thursday, February 6th, 6 p.m. at Town Hall. Um, I believe planning decided that that would be a closed discussion until the very end, correct, Tom? Yeah, um, so public comment will be received after the Planning Commission has had an opportunity to, to go through it and discuss it amongst themselves. Ordinance 2022, a proposed zoning text amendment to allow a restaurant slash lunchroom um, in the I Industrial District in the Twin Arch Industrial Park, the Planning Commission voted in favor of the amendment, sending it back to Town Council in March. Um, the Planning Commission meets again on Monday, February 24th. Junior Task Force meets on Monday, February 17th, 5 p.m. at Town Hall. They are actually working with Sherry Cates at State Farm um, or will be working with Sherry Cates at State Farm, hopefully, on an American Red Cross blood drive. Um, before a date can be selected for that blood drive, we need about 40 people to show interest. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're interested in donating blood, potentially in the spring, um, shoot me an email and I can put your name on the list. And that concludes my report. Thank you. I, I may have misheard you. February 6th is a workshop on sure, mixed yeah. use? 
Okay. For for the mixed use development. And All right. Did you say it's six o'clock? It's six. Did you say six it's not? Okay, I was reading mm -hmm. this. Okay. okay, thank you. And will that be taped? Um, it will be taped, and I'm going to reach out to CMC to see if we can get it actually uh, broadcast soon after. Okay. Okay. But it's closed, right? No, it's it's an open meeting. Which what okay. I think Councilwoman Reed was saying is comments from the public would come at the end of the discussion among the land okay. All right. Okay, down to sanitation, recycling, and Mount Airy Sustainable Commission Council Member Poirier. Thank you, Larry. Sure. Um, at our last uh, commission meeting for um, recycling and sanitation, um, we were able to schedule a sh the paper shredding and battery event, um, which will be um, on June 6th at Watkins Park um, and we will have signage and further notification about um, as that date gets closer. Um, we're looking at um, getting some banners and then also using the town um, signs uh, for publication for that. Um, we're still w working on a date for the bulk pickup so as soon as we figure out a date for that we will um, publicize that as well. Um, we got some interesting news um, at that meeting. Um, J and J is looking uh, to move their operations to Mount Airy, um, which is a very exciting, um, exciting news, and we look forward them uh, look forward to them joining Mount Airy. Um, I wanted to um, recognize the trash mob um, who recently on on June 25th, I believe, um, went over to the park and ride and did a cleanup. Um, this is just a, a volunteer group that just randomly heads out to places and um, as I drive up and down 70 and going into Howard County, it, it just amazes me how much actual trash and litter is, is out on our roadways when it doesn't get picked up. And here we have this volunteer group that just kind of take, takes it upon themselves um, to go out and just clean up areas and, and it's such an amazing thing. So um, follow them on Facebook, Mount Airy Trash Mob. Um, they will post a date, a time, a location, and if you can just give one or two hours. Um, I feel like many of the council members up here ha have been out there, and I knew the Junior Task Force also met with Trash Mob as well. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful volunteer group that just keeps our town looking as beautiful as it does and makes us appreciate Mount Airy a little bit more. Um, my next meeting is February 19th uh, for the Sustainable um, Mount Airy Commission um, at 7 p.m. and they will be having an alternate location um, somewhere in this building since that is our public hearing for Vosla. That concludes my report. All right, thank you. Sure. All right, uh, Streets and Roads Commission, Council Member Washaba. Yes, we had a meeting on Wednesday, January 29th, which was rescheduled from our original meeting on January 7th. We were one of the few people that were affected by about like the one or two days that we've actually had snow. The main topic of discussion was the back acre circle parking issue. As mentioned previously, the mayor made the decision in December to implement no parking, standing, or stopping signs in front of the dance studio located on back acre circle. The patrons and the dance studio owners, as well as the landlord Frank Dirt's boss, both and sent online submittal forms. Uh, to date, we have a total of 31 online submittal forms for that particular issue. So as you can see, it's been a very hot topic. Um, and there's, they want us to support rescinding the decision. That would be the patrons and the dance studio owners as well as the landlord where the dance studio owners reside. The town staff did review restriping the road in front of the studio. However, the cost is $10,000. After a discussion, Mayor Pattis suggested reviewing the possibility of a back entrance again. And the mayor and I, as well as the town staff, would be happy to meet with the owners and the landlord to review that solution. Jennifer Smith updated the town of Mount Airy temporary on-street parking request form. These forms must be completed and submitted to the Town of Mount Airy Streets and Road Commission a minimum of three months prior to the requested start date. We also discussed the crosswalks that are located 
on Loxley Lane and Kings Forest Trail in Nottingham uh, subdivision. Crosswalks will be striped at the stop signs. Right now there's a crosswalk, it's like the crosswalk to nowhere and it doesn't have a stop sign. So that will be going away. We'll have two cross crosswalks which will have stop signs and that's where the buses will stop. Um, so that will be a much safer environment for that neighborhood. Extended South Main Street, we've had issues with that. We will be seeing some improvements this spring. Uh, the town staff will be installing um, some some barriers. Actually, it will look like a little island. It will sort of give people the impression that they should be going around the curve as opposed to straight down extended uh, South Main Street. And also, they'll restripe that, so that will also help with the visual uh, as drivers are making that loop around. So hopefully, people won't keep going down South Main Street, extended South Main Street to try to get a 970 because there is no access. <laughs> okay, uh, then we have the Fairwood and Main intersection. Uh, that was a resident had brought to our attention that the site distance was affected in mornings due to the bus stop, the pole, and the new mailboxes that had been installed. Visual studies were done by the town staff. The pole cannot be moved, so that has to stay where it is. The mailbox did not impede the driver's vision. However, the students standing at the bus stop did. However, the uh, Frederick County Public School System Transportation Department was contacted, and the bus stop is actually further down the street, but the kids like to stand right at the corner, so that's causing the issue. We didn't really, we took it off the list, but as I was putting this on my report today, I thought maybe somehow we can try to get with the Frederick County um, Transportation Department again and just ask that the bus driver maybe actually stop where the bus stop should be and then maybe the children or the students will follow and you know correct that I mean I know they it's more convenient for them just to go to the to the intersection but I think just in for safety purposes it might be better just to revisit that one little time okay um, also, Barney was very, very gracious. He came to our meeting and he went over option three, which we have re reviewed in its entirety tonight. And we really appreciated that. It was just an FYI uh, so that I, I'd like to make sure that everybody on the Streets and Roads Commission is aware of what's happening with our streets. And lastly, nominations were presented for a new chairperson for the upcoming year. Lynn Galetti was nominated and voted unanimously unanimously that she would succeed Jennifer Smith who resigned from our commission very sadly after seven years she did an outstanding job and uh, the next meeting we will also be nominating and voting for the position of secretary and that meeting will take place on March 3rd at 7 o'clock in Town Hall and that completes my report all right, thank you, Patty. Uh, next is Water Secu uh, and Sewer Commission and Special Projects. That's myself. Uh, our next uh, Water and Sewer Commission meeting is this Wednesday at 7 p.m. here in Town Hall. That's uh, February 5th. And uh, we haven't met for the last couple of months, so um, there's really nothing to report unless Dick would like to say something. You good? Okay. All right. As far as uh, special uh, projects goes, Historical Society, I'm not going to give it away, but the Hall of Fame inductees for this year have been picked, but I'm going to wait and let the uh, uh, president of the Historical Society come and announce that on March uh, at the March Council meeting. However, that puts it kind of tight because the Hall of Fame dinner is on March 17th. So if you would like tickets for the March 17th Hall of Fame dinner, uh, then you can uh, go to the Blossom and Basket uh, Boutique and you can buy your, your tickets there for the Hall of Fame dinner. It'll be uh, held uh, March 17th at the American Legion. Okay, uh, the bingo is coming up uh, for the Historical Society. That is on 
February 22nd, and just so happens the chairman's here. Would you like to give a shameless plug? Okay. Hello. Um, yes, our boxes and bag bingo is February 22nd at the um, Volunteer Fireman Reception Hall. We have 20 games, 20 regular games, uh, four special games, four raffles, 50-50. Um, We've had a tremendous turnout from our sponsors, from our local businesses, from private citizens. So it's going to be a wonderful event. Um, Please, you know, get your tickets. You can get them on Facebook, online, or at the um, the museum, which is open 12 to 4. And if you haven't been to the museum, you got to get into the museum. We have our train layout is growing, and we have some new um, displays, so don't miss out on that. So I'll see you all at the bingo. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. So, yeah, bingo is a lot of fun, brings in quite a bit of money for the historical societies that goes into the displays at the museum. So uh, pretty impressive. Uh, good news on the caboose, we finally got that rear uh, entry onto the caboose that allows us to send people through the front end of the caboose and out the back end. Now the question is, what's the front and what's the back? We don't know. So, but uh, anyway, that should make it uh, you know a, a lot easier during the heavy traffic of the chili cook-off and and uh, Oktoberfest, things like that. We're going to be able to get people in and out of the uh, caboose relatively quickly. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, there is the Southwest Airlines raffle. That's two round trip tickets on Southwest Airlines. Uh, tickets, the raffle tickets only cost you $10 a piece. They're on sale in Town Hall, at the Blossom and Basket Boutique, and at the museum. So, uh, so, and they'll also be available for sale at the bingo. Only 300 tickets will be sold, and usually we only sell about 200. So your chances of winning are one in 200. That's pretty good, okay, for two round trip tickets. Domestic only, you're not going to Hawaii on these. Okay, uh, so that's going on with that, and I think that's it. So uh, with that, we go to the um, town administrator report. Uh, what do you got going on, David? Well. Um we sent out the progress reports for all our projects to the mayor and council. If anyone has any questions, feel free. We'll try to answer them. Um, one thing is uh, we submitted a public arts in public places request, a grant. This is a $2,500, 100% grant from the state, and we've been working with the uh, Mount Airy Arts Alliance to try to get that done. What that would do is give them some funding to do some a vision plan, another vision plan. But it's a vision plan about art in public places. Um, and hopefully we can get that grant, get that idea going, get some input from the community, get approval from the council. And then there's another grant after that, after we've decided what art we want and where we want it, that we can go after to try to encourage the artists to put some public art. The only other thing I would report is that we had testimony in front of the uh, Frederick County delegation for our urban renewal litigation uh, um, legislation and that went fairly well the Carroll County delegation has endorsed us and encouraged Frederick County delegation so we have to work both sides of the street so to speak and hopefully that gets taken care of this Friday and then the bill would actually get submitted and then go through the legislature yeah. all right thank you thank you all right uh, town attorney report Tom McCarran attended the January Planning Commission at which the priorities resolution of the Planning Commission was before it as well as uh, initial discussion of the MXD ordinance and uh, the text amendment uh, concerning restaurants in the industrial district uh, attended a meeting with the uh, M among uh, members uh, representatives of the MDE town staff uh, councilman Munder as well uh, as well as IDA and its council concerning Harrison Lashier. Uh, I uh, did follow up, and we'll talk about later, I guess, CSX and the regular property issues uh, and prepared the two uh, PWAs on the agenda as well as the ordinances on the agenda tonight. Finally, um, as was mentioned by somebody earlier, uh, on February 19, I believe, starting at 7 p.m., is the hearing on the Voslo uh, properties application for rezoning. 
that is uh, a sort of different proceeding than a legislative one. It's what we call a quasi-judicial proceeding, and so you all will be sitting kind of like judges, uh, and I will have a legal memorandum to all of you in the coming days that outlines the nature of that proceeding, those issues that are on the table for you all to decide, and the manner in which uh, you all sit and proceed in that type of proceeding, because it is a little bit different. Okay. So that's it. All right. Thank you, Tom. And uh, Voslo is at 7 p.m.? Is it, I think it's at 7 p.m. on Wait, February right? the 19th. Okay. Okay, uh, we have a copy of the Code Enforcer report. Um, and um, at this point, we will uh, go into a possible uh, closed meeting. Um, Statutory, statutory authority to a closed session general provisions article as allowed by uh, 13305 B3 to consider the acquisition of real property for public purpose and matters directly related thereto subject Wrigler CSX possible location for the new police station and downtown parking and uh, I would move that following that closed meeting, uh, the town council meeting is officially adjourned. Um, is there a second on that? I'll second. Okay, and roll call, council member Reed? Aye. Council aye. member Breyer? I'm an aye. Aye. Washington? Aye. And under. Okay, all right, with that, we'll go into closed session. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Wendy? Can you connect with this?